What is good, y'all? Welcome back to the John Cat Show, uh, episode 29. It's been a minute. Uh, I hope everybody had an amazing, this is post Thanksgiving day, belated Thanksgiving episode, I guess. I was on the road during Thanksgiving. Forgive me if I sound a little hoarse, been fighting a cold, so if I'm uh, coughing stuff up or sound a little raspy, I'm going to edit that out, believe me, if I do. In any case, I hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving. We're going to get into some Thanksgiving stuff uh, here in a minute as well. It's uh, Sunday the 28th, I think, so it's still Thanksgiving weekend. You may be seeing this Monday morning, but um, like I said, I've been traveling a lot, so I'm going to talk a little bit about you know, stuff from the road, little things I noticed driving around. I know some of you saw I got a uh, Forerunner recently. It's my first SUV. Thank you to everybody who recommended getting a Forerunner. I really love it. I rented rented one once for a road trip, and I really liked it. And uh, I had reached out to people online. I was like, "What's a good?" Because all the SUVs nowadays they look like, um, you know, like hybrid minivan, station wagon. They're really appealing to the soccer moms more than anything, but. I was like, what's a good SUV that's still like an SUV? The new Broncos, some of them are like little toy RAV4s, but some are legit, but they're back ordered like crazy. And uh, I got really lucky and I had found a Forerunner at a dealership in the exact color I wanted and everything. So I just put like 6,000 miles on that thing already in two months. And I don't even do 5,000 miles a year usually, so... A lot, of, a lot of driving around. I'll have some anecdotes from that. But yeah, I'm also going to, you know, I also want to get, like I said, I'm going to branch out. Music, movies, shows. I'm into so many things. This show's been, this podcast has been, you know, political a lot. And uh, politics are grossing me out lately. There's way more important things in life. So I want to get into shows. I want to get into movies. I want to put lists together. So like every episode, I'm going to give you guys a list of top something you know just my own personal list whether it's you know songs movies music um you name it and it's going to get real specific so you know we'll we'll string that thing out a long time so like if we do shows we won't just do shows it'll be like you know best drama series or best comedy shows that kind of thing so today i'm, I'm gonna do a uh okay well one of the things from being on the road i'm going way off topic here uh Sirius XM radio. I've always been one of these people that like never would sign up for Sirius. So I, I'd only have it if I'm in like a loaner or a rental or something. Um, but I, they're smart. They give you the free trial. So while I'm out there, certain artists have their own. I'm sure you guys are like, duh, this has been going on for years. But uh, this is the first time I really, you know, listen to Sirius uh, seriously. That was the worst pun. So Dave, there's a Dave Matthews channel. There's a Pearl Jam channel. There's a Grateful Dead channel. There's a YouTube channel. Like, first of all, they're appealing to every Gen X or, you know, end of Gen X generation like me because they know it's the, you know, early 40s guys who are uh, into all that stuff and subscribe to all these things and just jam out to all the music from when they were a teenager. Um, but you got to have a deep, deep, deep library to support your own channel. I mean, yeah, they do you know, fill in some of the gap by curating. The artist will curate other. So like every 10th song, let's say you're listening to the Dave Matthews channel, you know, he'll throw in like a song by Outkast or something that he likes. Um, and they give like a little preface to it. But they also play like full concerts. Here's what's really impressive about this, actually. The, the Dave Matthews channel in particular, like I don't know who's producing this thing, but I want to say... I'm I'm not going to get the dates right. It was it was uh, earlier this month. It okay. You could look up in November they played two shows in a row in New York City on a Thursday and Friday. I was in my car on a Saturday. I want to say it was Saturday the 13th and they played New York shows two nights in a row uh Thursday the 11th and Friday the 12th. And on Saturday the 13th, that concert was already on Sirius XM. Like, it didn't even have the songs listed because, like, the set list wasn't even loaded. They just threw it up. And by the way, it's something I talked about before. Every band should have a soundboard recording at every concert they do. 
I mean, the reason most don't do it is because most can't actually perform live as well as anything close to what they do in the studio. But when you're a band like Dave, they're actually very unique. I mean, they're they're at the top of that list, which is a they sound you know as good or better. Like they're a live band; they sound as good or better live as they do in the studio. There's no auto tuning. There's no computerization of any fucking thing going on. But um, they're also a live band in the sense that they string, you know, they'll take a six minute song, turn it into a 20 minute song. And that version will be, you know, legendary. And, you know, compared to the album version, it'll go, it's not even close. Um, and, and I got into them late for that reason, because I'd heard a couple album versions of songs. And also the kids who were like too into them annoyed me. And uh, so I was like, even though they were already big when I was in high school, I didn't really get into them until I was like 20. I got into Dave late in the game. Now we're talking a couple decades later. I've been a huge fan. I've been to more than a dozen concerts, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I for sure came in a few years late. I wasn't, you know, heroin Dave was slightly before my time. You hear some of the live stuff on there of him singing in like 93. It's like his voice is all squeaky and different. It's weird. But show me anyone who sings. If you hear... Pull up like shit, the the show I just talked about or Central Park, you know, from a couple years ago is a ton of stuff on YouTube, but pull up any Dave show in the last couple of years. That dude still sounds as good. Who sounds as good 30 years later as they sounded in the early 90s? Like not, all those guys voices just got completely shredded and he sings the heck out of the song. I don't know how how he's able to maintain that. It's, it's impressive. We'll get into more of that later uh, toward the end of the show. And uh, I'll break down that list for you. I'm going to do a top 20 Dave Matthews songs. And that was hard to do. I tried to even do it in order. It's hard. You sound like 20. Like most of the bands I do lists for, I'm going to be doing like top 10 songs or whatever. 20. I wanted to do 25. It was even that hard because, again, the library is so deep. They have their own channel. You know, the dead have their own channel, obviously. Pearl Jam is is underrated as far as um, the depth of their library. Everybody knows the early Pearl Jam stuff. By the way, Whatever. I'll say it 10 trillion times. I, I um, completely separate politics out when it comes to artists I grew up listening to. I expect these guys to be bleeding heart liberals or whatever. You know what I mean? It, it you know it um, It'll never take away from the artistry. I'm not a fan of a guy's music because of you know what he thinks about uh economic and and domestic policy and stuff like that factors in zero for me and to be honest i mostly feel the same way about sports which is why i still watch football and everything else i don't care what people's politics are if that's not the reason that i'm into them you know they can be a savant in the area that i appreciate i appreciate artistry and i separate the rest out and uh i think people should do more of the same but yeah, Pearl Jam has a deep, deep, deep library because they never stop putting out music. And Eddie Vedder's put out so much solo stuff. I mean, phew. plus, uh, again, they do a million live shows. I mean, when I was a kid, they were one of the few bands that allowed their stuff to basically be bootleg. See, nobody could have envisioned back in the day that you could record a concert and then the next day have it be eternalized digitally on youtube and everything else so like if you do a good soundboard recording as a band nowadays that you know one version of a song where you went crazy in charlottesville virginia could get 50 million views on youtube and become the most amazing legendary thing ever or it could get forty-seven thousand views and 10 years later people just happen to pull it up and it becomes their favorite version either way but we used to scour these obscure music stores and find like you know, Pearl Jam live in Atlanta, 1991, whatever, like there was all these amazing finds you could get. And I knew people who were so deep into the bootleg game and finding all these rare, rare things and, you know, burning the CDs. And we thought it was so high tech, but I mean, dang, nowadays you could just throw it right up. But like I said, most artists can't support that. They don't sound good enough and they don't want their concert stuff eternalized in that way. But Anyway, so like I said, yeah, it was Thanksgiving. So uh, I hope everyone had a great holiday. Specifically, Thanksgiving is about what, being thankful for uh, for all that we have and so forth. I think that's like, you know, for me personally, 
if, if you know some of you follow me or watch my episode people go oh, John's going through you know some sort of soul searching journey this this type of thing for sure I've had you know the last year or so has been uh pretty tumultuous and crazy and uh you know turning well I'd say the last few years starting with losing my dad I've talked about and then other personal stuff that I, I you know I don't need to get into necessarily but yeah, I guess isn't that the number one lesson, right? Just be be thankful, be grateful. I talk about that on here all the time. Um, it's easy to give advice. It's hard to take your own. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's funny too, because I always pride myself and have prided myself and still do on I've never been grass is greener guy, you know, uh, a, I'm just a very simple person. So, you know, I don't want for, you know, I don't ever look at people. If people are happy and successful, I'm way happier that they're happy and successful. I never begrudged anybody. I never looked at anybody and go, I wish I had, you know, their car. I wish I had their whatever, like house, like that, that type of stuff, um, is, is just naturally, I think people are kind of like, but, on a personal level, everybody kind of has their own demons where they, you know, I guess the opposite of being thankful for what you have is kind of desiring things beyond what you have and not in a comparative kind of way. So even people who aren't grass is greener types, uh, you know, I always say everybody's got kind of these personal demons they battle and they, they come from, you know, I, a very young age. They started at a very young age based on our own perspective. Everyone's perspectives of life are just so different than each other's. And um, the way we feel and the things that we're sensitive to and the way that we process certain information, you know, we don't have to understand exactly what's going on in other people's heads to understand the fact that whatever's going on in their head and the way that they're viewing things is so vastly different than the way that we do. And sure, sometimes we'll run into people where it's so similar. And it's right, you go, but even then, even then, everybody's living in their own mind, satisfying whatever weird stuff is floating around in there, built up from the time they were born until until now. And just their, their perception of the world is so different and perception of reality is so different. But um, just keeping that in mind helps uh, such a great deal in different interactions and and just giving up kind of the expectation that people are going to understand and see things from where you're coming from because they can't as much as they'd want to and as much as people can empathize. Some people can more than others and some can relate to certain things more than others. So, you know, I don't want to make anything so black and white. I do generalize a lot, but generally speaking, always keep that in mind and it'll save you a ton of grief because you know for one people aren't people don't really change they can grow and evolve and learn but the core of who somebody is doesn't ever really change so expecting that to happen forget it you'll just beat your head against a wall and then you know uh number two just understanding that if something makes sense to them on a deep level it doesn't have to make sense to you but it should make sense to you that you know because of where they come from and what they've been through and what they've experienced and all that type of stuff, uh, you, you may never just see eye to eye on certain things. But yeah, be thankful for what you have. Number one, health. You know, I, like I said, I have a cold. I haven't had a cold in forever. And uh, one thing about being on the road and all those things, it, I, you know, you don't take care of yourself. You don't eat well. I've, I've talked in the last episode about quitting smoking. And I definitely want to quit smoking. And um, I cut down a ton since I got back because I, you know, it, I just felt obviously you could probably hear I'd still sound congested. So, but I wasn't taking my supplements like I usually take for sure. All the vitamin D and all that. Plus the winter months, you don't get the sun. You want to take your vitamin D. I did a whole old show on supplements. You guys can look it up. But um, yeah, listen, your health is most important. Without your health, everything else kind of doesn't even matter. Freedom, I'll say all the time, if you got a roof over your head, if you got clean access to clean water and food and clothes and transportation, you're already one in a quadrillion, trillion, trillion 
of the luckiest people that ever lived on the planet. So just uh, be thankful for that. And then our families, you know, if, if any other lesson has really hit me over these last recent times, it's that, um, man, family really is important. And people, look, it, it, you can, families have ups and downs. They have their own rifts. They have all those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, like if you ever really, really, really need people, that's a really small crew of your true family. And if you're a family, if you're lucky enough to have you know, one, two, three, four people like that in your life, um, that's the greatest blessing of all. So, um, you know, I've had like some people as siblings and stuff really step up and, uh, and help me out with stuff recently, you know? Um, so yeah, listen, be thankful for that if you have it and don't be one of these people. Again, you can have your own demons, um, live in the present. You know, you don't want to dwell in the past and on all the regrets and the shit you could have done different or you'll drive yourself literally insane doing that. And you don't want to look to the future too much either and think about, look, there's always more. Whatever you're into, there's always going to be more. So there's a book called uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And it talks about in the first chapter and through. I didn't even listen to the whole thing. I started to listen to it full disclosure, but it talks about how, um, you know, if there's a specific thing you're obsessed with wanting, you're always going to feel less than. So let's say you're obsessed with, uh, losing weight or you're obsessed with money or whatever. Like you'll, it, so if you're a person who's obsessed, let's say with your body type, you'll always feel like you have the opposite body type, even though it's, if it's better than most other people's, or let's say you have a decent amount of money, but you're obsessed with acquiring, more wealth, you'll always feel poorer than people who are actually poorer than you because the obsession of the wanting and the unnatural desire you have for this thing is going to breed negativity for what you already have. And it's the opposite of thankfulness. So always keep that in mind. And remember, you know, it lists out all the shit that you have and, and, and those who haven't had it and have never had it uh, throughout human history and everything else. And still don't today. So nothing bigger than that. But yeah, uh, driving around a ton. It's the perfect time of year as far as it's so gorgeous with the colored leaves just dropping everywhere. And anywhere you go, Mississippi and Alabama and, and uh, I mean, parts of Arizona, unbelievable. Um, the way the, I, I haven't spent this time of year, I don't think anywhere other than Florida in a long time, Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, you forget how pretty so much of the country is. I was just saying as, as ugly as Florida is this time of year, you know, compared to those places, the, the winter weather is nice, you know, 60s with a little humidity still in the air. You get so dried out out there too. That's the thing. If, if it's dry this time of year, a lot of parts of the country. But yeah, man, I just put that thing on cruise control and um, have you, I don't know if you guys, I've never been a cruise control guy either, but I'll tell you what, once you start using it, you can't stop using it, especially for long, long hauls and you can just stretch your legs and do all kinds of contorting positions. Um, I, I, it's funny because, you know, you're trusting, I don't know, again, if people are like, oh, this has been out forever, I don't use it, but the way the um, the way the cruise control works on there, you can choose how far in front of you, how many car lengths you want for it to slow down. So it automatically will break. If you get too close to a car, you can do one, two or three car lengths. And it's very generous. I don't think it means one, two or three. The three is like 10 car lengths. And the one is like, I don't know, probably four or five car lengths, but it has three settings, I should say. And, um, but you start to trust it too much because one, I just, in general, the idea of trusting a computer to break for me is, is, uh, you know, you're, you're giving a lot of trust into this thing. Like what if it just malfunctions for a second, you're going to slam into this car, but then also you start to trust it to slow down just instinctively for other stuff. So let's say you approach a curve or a ramp. You're like, Oh wait, it's not, why isn't it slowing down? I got to, Oh, right. I got to put my foot back to, uh, to go around this curve. So 
it feels dangerous in a way like you get a little too comfortable with it and a little too trusting of a, a computer there this is the other thing i was talking about with the uh with the semi trucks dude if you're driving any type of long distance on these interstates with these semi trucks like first of all i learned a ton on twitter because i said who's worse person than these semi truck drivers who take a half hour to pass the other semi truck who's going half a mile an hour slower than they are and it's like Cause you'll be just cruising along cruise control, you know, 80 miles an hour with, and then you just see like a line of like 12 or 15 cars and it's some truck trying to pass this other truck. And, uh, he's just holding everybody up. But people on Twitter pointed out to me that they, that their speeds are governed, meaning that, you know, there's built in gear on that truck preventing it from going above a certain speed. And because of that, they all basically go the same speed. However, there's going to be slight variance based on, they were saying, tire pressure and engine and other things. So it makes sense. So you're, it's like a, if you got on like go-karts at the um, amusement, like certain go-karts are supposed to be all the same speed, but they're not. And some of these trucks are going to run a little faster. So if yours is naturally going a couple miles an hour faster or whatever, I guess it just they that's how they do it. They just pass each other. But it's true. People pointed out the worst person, if you're in a car doing that, then you really have a problem and you need to get out the fast lane. There are way too many people using the passing lane that have no business in that lane. But yeah, I um I also hadn't had a speeding ticket in like 20 years. I'm telling you from living down in Florida, because here's the point I'm going to make. Small town places will pull your ass over. There's a dude on Twitter named Dent McGee, and I'd seen him talking about Louisiana Highway Patrol being insane. And uh, I got pulled over by Louisiana Highway Patrol. They do not play. Uh, homie had me get out of the car, and it was very serious. And I have to uh, call and pay that ticket at some point soon. He wouldn't even tell me how much it is. I got to call, like, the Louisiana whatever parish. It's probably going to be a fortune for that thing. And then even some other little town in Jackson, Mississippi, I was going, like, 40-something. And it was, like, a 30 a 30 or something. I was like some back road, some local little sheriff pulled me over. Now those guys, he actually let me go and he was very nice. Um, it's like the, the small area highway guys you got to really worry about because it's the rep. They don't have other stuff to worry about. You get back down to Florida, like, yeah, you can get pulled over. Once you hit South Florida, forget it, man. You, it, you get on the turnpike, it's uh, what, 70. Everyone's doing 94 miles an hour. And no one's getting pulled over. It's just like an agreed upon thing. Like you got to be doing like 108 to get pulled over between Palm Beach and Dade County on the turnpike or something. Once you get up to like central and northern Florida, for sure they're pulling you over up there. But I think it's a combination of just obviously cops have way more to worry about in places that have real crimes and they get revenue from other things and so forth. But. But yeah, yeah. one thing I was thinking is funny, like when you're driving along um, with these packs, like like you become like a little family for a while. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you're on a interstate for a couple hours, like ever you get used to the cars around you, you kind of all agree on a speed and everyone's kind of got their own little style. Like and then you like you get all you're like kind of disappointed. You're like, oh, shit. Like if you have to stop, you're like, I don't know, I'm going to get stuck with some other bad pack that I was with like an hour ago that took me a while to navigate around like you're sad to leave your crew you know what I mean I don't know maybe it's just me I'll tell you uh, something else that Florida got right which is <clears throat> once you get down to the turnpike and stuff down here they have service plazas not just rest stops so they combine like most places you're in you have all the rest stops. You could stop, go to the bathroom, whatever, but you can't get gas and food there other than the vending machine, but you can't get gas. You got to make separate stops if you just want to rest or get gas. And a lot of times to get gas, you have to get off at an exit, you know, where it says like 0 0.2 miles to the right to the Chevron or whatever. And you're in like some little highway town. But when you hit Florida, they have these full service stations and, and uh, it's both, you know, they're kind of rest stop service station by all in one. And you can kind of just do it all there. And Florida just managed really well. I say it all the time. They have one of the lowest debts or maybe the lowest debt in the whole country without collecting any state income tax versus places like New York and Cali are collecting insane amount of state income tax. They have huge debt, the worst in the country. So, you know, look at who's managing what and how they're managing. People go, oh, Florida has booming tourism or whatever. Well, 
there's a reason people want to come here. And New York and California had booming tourism too. And there's a reason people stopped wanting to go to those places. That all goes hand in hand too. But yeah, man, that uh, that Sirius XM kept me going. The Dave and, and Pearl Jam channels. I heard more Pearl Jam and Dave songs and was reminded of more songs that I'd forgotten about from back in the day than I could even remember. And I love that they go deep, deep cuts. And the Grateful Dead channel is dope. And even the U2 channel. And uh, I'm going to have to renew that Sirius they're smart to give you that free trial and I have to renew it for the first time in my life. It's another stupid subscription I'm going to have, but I don't know. It's going to get a lot of use. I didn't know they had those channels. What do I know? I was like, oh, that's Howard Stern shit. I don't want to listen to Stern. All right. So let me, let me, let me give you all the Dave Matthews top. This is John Katz top 20. It's controversial as shit. If there's Dave fans on here, they're going to be like, oh, this dude left off all these great songs. He's not a real Dave fan and stuff. And if you are if you don't know the band and you think they're cheesy or stupid or you hate the type of people who were into them, maybe just pull up a couple live versions on YouTube of these songs here. And, uh, you know, whichever ones have a lot of views, give them a listen. I mean, if you don't see the talent there, here's the thing about Dave that, that, that makes them unique is that, I don't know if people, look, they have, uh, unorthodox instruments that people wouldn't normally have, whether it's violin or a sax or a trumpet or whatever. And, you know, the way, the way Dave formed the band, he basically like said, Hey, I need people to audition for this band. And they came in with these weird instruments. And if they sound the good, he's like, yeah, you're in the band. Like, why can't you be? And then also my understanding is that when he writes songs, you know, obviously he writes some music himself and he's a very good guitar player when I say music like the actual melodies and things but from my understanding you know most of their songs and the ones that people would know he basically would write the lyrics and then kind of give it to the band and go like you know let's do some stuff to it so it's a lot of why it sounds unorthodox and something I've always said is that Dave's voice sounds like an instrument within the band and I think that's why because they'll take his lyrics and rather than him strumming along and just kind of going with his voice, they take his lyrics, they create this amazing whirlwind of music to it, and then he comes in with the voice and makes the lyrics fit the music. So it's like his voice becomes an instrument, and I think it's what makes them sound so special uh, in any case. All right, so let's get to the list. Uh, number one, again, this is a controversial list. And Okay, one more disclaimer. I base this on the fact that, and this is hugely important, I've been to so many shows and I've listened to a thousand more live versions of all these songs. So it's kind of a conglomerate of, number one, how do these songs sound at their best versions? So the, the, the studio, if you're comparing just studio versions, this wouldn't be fair. I couldn't even make a list of studio versions. I'd have to go back and listen to the originals. So this list may not apply to album versions. That's the first disclaimer. And then number two, again, this is John Katz nostalgia list and how I view these songs and when I've heard them and what they mean to me and the lyrics and, you know, hearing them at certain concerts and how great certain versions were and all those kind of things factor into this. All right. So number one on the list, two step. And by the way, I might, if I have the energy, put up graphics on the screen here so you can see the list at the very least I'm gonna list the list on like YouTube and iTunes and stuff so if you want to see the list after the episode just look at like the description of the pod whether on YouTube iTunes whatever and it'll it'll list it out for you guys all right so two-step is my number one it just has I was about to actually start singing for you guys I'm not I'm not gonna even attempt to sing if if some lyrics come belting out of me I might keep them in I might edit them out I don't know I'm not gonna sing on here I have a terrible terrible singing voice on top of this cold you definitely don't want to hear that okay um but the, the, just the, the way the beat builds and it just it builds and builds and builds and then the, again the voice comes in with just like this sweet melodic all right so I was doing I um it's just a, such a complete and they and they just will jam out the longest versions of it at the shows and uh it's just such a sweet good feeling 
building song from uh from the mel you know from the melody and and the instrumentals to the to the lyrics and everything else and i, I just every time i put that song on it makes me feel good so we're going two step with number one i'm going to get through this list fast i promise there's 20 of these things and again future lists are going to be less these guys library is too deep i couldn't even cut it off at 20 okay uh number two going with the song crush not to be confused with crash which was the radio listen and i don't want to be like everyone knows crash and satellite as like the two dave songs i neither of them in full disclosure made this list because uh I don't know if you if maybe if they existed in a vacuum, it's just to hear those album versions played on the radio that many times. It's like, all right, I get it. They're great songs. I love them. I could listen to them, but they don't make this list. Sorry. The song Crush. Another. It's another song that just builds and builds and builds and the lyrics and just encapsulates what you feel. You know, a, a lot of artists, when they sing, they kind of get too poetic in the mystery of what the lyric really means but like you know these dave songs not that they're too straightforward but you know you 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 could dig the vibe you, you can grasp the vibe and you can relate to them real easily uh which is a lot of the appeal you know crazy i'm thinking anyway uh that's a hell of a song and it, it's it's got a lot of meaning for me as well and just the 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 whole notion behind uh what he's talking about in that. And again, just the beat and the rhythm and the way it built. All right. I don't know if you can hear my cat crying in the background that I don't know how to edit out. So if there's weird meows during this thing, uh, forgive me for that too. All right. Number three, uh, we're going with number 41. That's actually the name of the song. Number 41. Um, I, they say it was the 41st song they wrote, but then there was some other talk that that wasn't even true. In any case, that's just the name. It has nothing to do with the lyrics or anything like that. Um, and again, just such a sweet melody. Like these are just very sweet, kind of upbeat. Um, you know, there's some sadder songs on this list too. But uh, well, all right, I'm not singing that. Uh, let's go quickly. Number four, we got the song "Warehouse." Warehouse, Warehouse is one of these songs, it's like two or three songs in one, you know, it just kind of starts as one way, it comes in another way, and then it finishes out another way, and it kind of repeats, um, it's got like one of my favorite lines, it's such a great line, I don't even want, again, I don't want to sing it, shut up, uh, the line says, shut up, I'm thinking, I had a clue, now it's gone forever, um, I just love that line, because it's so true, you know, there's so many times you'll just kind of have a thought on the tip of your head, where you think you just kind of had some insight or figured something out like you're in a trance and something just snaps you out of it. like, damn, what was I, I, what was I just onto there for a second? And what snapped me back into real life and away from the understanding I was about to, to gain there somehow. Uh, I'm going to get through these quick. Uh, number five, we're going to go dancing Nancy's. Could I have been anyone other than me? Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to explain, uh, you know, each song and whatever, look them up yourselves, look up some live versions, especially also look up Dave and Tim. There's a guy named Tim Reynolds. Dude's one of the greatest acoustic guitarists to ever do it. Dave and uh, Tim have done a lot of shows together and it's just two guys with two acoustic guitars. And those are some of the best versions you'll hear of some of these songs. I would say if you, if you want like kind of the full gamut, start with Dave and Tim live at Luther College, Luther, L-U-T-H-E-R College from, I don't know, 20 years ago. And then like a decade later, Dave and Tim live at Radio City Music Hall. That'll kind of give you the full gamut of the early stuff and then some of the, you know, slightly later stuff. Uh, number six, Lie in Our Graves. I can't believe it. I got, you know what, it's a, these songs, the lyrics are so good, you know. I can't believe that we would lie in our graves wondering if we had spent our living days well. I can't believe that we would lie in our graves dreaming of things that we might have been, could have been, baby. You know, again, you know, these kind of lyrics, anybody can can relate to these types of things. So uh, number seven, best of what's around, best of what's around. Um, not going to sing it. Number eight, when the world ends. 
Don't you worry about a thing. Mm. All right, just you and me. Grave Digger, number nine, Grave Digger. This is like a slightly later. It's funny, like these songs are old, but I think of them as like later Dave stuff. I don't know. Something about that song. That's going to be a controversial pick. The fact that I put Grave Digger as number nine, people, Dave fans are going to hate that. But I think, I don't know. I don't know what they think. But I doubt people have it ranked that high. I just love that song. And uh, I could listen to it over and over and over again. Number 10, The Stone. The Stone. This is uh, slightly older. I was just wondering if you come along. Either if that ends up in here, I will be shocked or it's getting edited out. All right. All right. Number 11 is a, a fun little song called Say Goodbye. Uh, again, I'm not going to get into all of these. That's like a, actually a, like a, a sexual type song a little bit. All right. Number 12 uh, is the song. Okay. This is actually a controversial pick at 12. It's not their song. Everybody knows the Jimi Hendrix song all along the watchtower. Uh, it's a legendary song. Dave forever has, I don't know that it's on an album. I mean, it's on live stuff, obviously, but <clears throat> I used to go, I used to work for a company that sponsored an amphitheater here in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I used to go to both shows every summer for many years. And I would say at least half the shows, they close with their cover of Hendrix all along the Watchtower. And it's Dave's version is just so different. And I put it at number 12 because anytime I play a version of this that I have on, you know, used to have on disc or now that I have digitally or, you know, YouTube or whatever, or on Sirius, they damn so many versions and uh, talk about just the way it builds and builds and builds and they just rock it the fuck out and it closes out shows and it's always, you know, 10, 12 minutes and it's just a, a jam and it's such a legendary song to begin with so i had to put it on here because of the way i enjoy it at number 12 all along the watchtower Jimi hendrix cover and he just builds and builds say the joker to the team you know so let us not talk falsely now the hour is getting late and he holds that late for like and holds that shit for like half hour and then just oh you know the song goes crazy crazy all right let's keep it going number 13 jimmy thing that's actually everybody knows that song. well any date but you know it's a pretty pretty popular song um uh number 14 again maybe controversial i just love this song for some reason it's called gray street was kind of you know not some of the earlier stuff <clears throat> number 15 go with a song called ants marching that was actually that was on the radio a lot ants marching i just um i don't know take the the lyrics again the lyrics do it for me talking about you know all about it's one of my favorite lines i might should have even put this one higher you know take these chances place them in a box until a quieter time lights down you up and die again that's something i actually talk about all the time is um foregoing chances or foregoing opportunities or going ah, i could do that later i could i'm the worst procrastinator ever so like you know it's saying take these chances put them away till the quieter time and then boom you're dead it's like you, you really only get the one life so that's the message there we're all just ants marching right all right 16 this is a rare i think it's rare again i'm kind of in my own world like i don't, i don't join so like, okay, I don't know what other Dave fans listen to and like, because I'm not, I don't like get into, you know, a group like that. So like, I couldn't tell you if other people did lists, like if any of these songs are their faves, I don't know. I don't know what people are like. I don't belong to any Dave clubs or anything. I just kind of got into it on my own and I find what I like and I listen to what I'm, in, I'm into. So it's called stolen away on 55th and third i it's a very it's kind of a rare cup but just know. a sweet little song about you know i don't know again pull these songs up you'll like them all right number 17 we're going with a song called raven raven it's i uh, you know again i don't know how popular it is i just i love it i could listen to it over and over again we're getting down to the end of the list here what was that number 17 number 18 this is a song called i'll back you up my understanding this is the first song 
Dave wrote. This is a sad, sad little sweet song. And uh, I don't know that they even really perform it that much. But, um, you know, I like listening to sad music sometimes. You get into your feels and, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, like I said, everybody who's been through life can, can relate to a lot of different things. Life's a motherfucker sometimes. So I think people relate to some of the painful songs most of all. But number 19, a song people may know as well. It's called Trippin' Billies. Again, that's a fun song. There we go. We went from a sad one to a much more fun you know, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow and we'll die. You know, uh, again, a lot of message in these songs about, you know, take chance. You only live once. Eat, drink, be merry. Don't take stuff too seriously. It's a good message. That's a fun jam, and uh, it's a fun one to do at shows. All right, number 20. I, I, I'm ending it on a sad one, I guess, as well. I like the sad ones. What can I tell you? It's called Some Devil. It was actually, you know, some of these are the title of albums. I don't know if I included Never. It's also like one of these sad, melancholy breakup songs, but uh, it's very good. Dave's super talented. That was a hard ass list to do because there's 40 other songs I'll listen to, you know, from from you know uh, the everyday to typical situation and 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 Halloween and all these other random songs and uh, you know there's other stuff they just do live like the Neil Young's Cortez the Killer. They do an insanely good version of that live. I, I kind of wanted to put that on the list, you know. We came dancing across the water. Look them up, man. If y'all aren't already a fan. and So let me hear, A, people who are fans, what's wrong with my list? What should I have not put on here? Uh, and what would you have put on instead? And then also, you know, if people are not into them, I'd be insanely curious to hear the thoughts of people getting into it for the first time. So hit me up on that too. Y'all can find me mostly. I'm just on Twitter. It's at John Katz show J O N K A T Z S H O W. I have the Instagram and Facebook. I don't really use them. So DM me on Twitter. If you, if you have any questions or anything, I love to do like listener topics and stuff too. And again, I hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving and uh, be thankful for real. If you got your health and freedom and all those other things, be thankful, be thankful for your family and uh, for what you have and live in the moment. And uh, I'm going to be for real kicking out a couple of these a week. So you'll see this, you know, Sunday night or Monday following Thanksgiving weekend. And I should have another one up for you in a couple of days after that, you know, midweek. Maybe I'll start doing like Mondays and Thursdays, I think would be a good, a good schedule. And I'm going to be doing lists like this, this, this list, you know, I'll get better. I feel like it was a little awkward and gawky the way I went through that. I'll get better at my lists, but we're going to do all kinds of stuff. So uh, I won't do songs again next week. We'll save songs for a while. We'll do like some shows or some movies or something like that. We'll switch it up. And uh, I just, I love and appreciate all of you. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing and all that. And uh, I will see you in a couple days. Peace. Mm -hmm.